Hello, everybody. This time around, we're going to talk about two things. The first thing we're going to talk about is building the radar navigator and radar observer or bombardier compartment that goes under the flight deck. Let's look at this the way it is. That doodad I got right there, that piece of tape right there is 12 foot six inches. The top of that tape is 12 foot six. That is the diameter of the B-36 fuselage. So see if I can take this model and see what the, the front half would look like sitting in this neighborhood, if I can do this. So it's, it's essentially that entire thing with, with a foot. So we'd have to go back. I might not even be able to do this. But like essentially like that. So sitting on the driveway, it'd be like that. Let's see. Sitting. And it's just the fuselage, not the canopy. The canopy is going to put it probably 16 feet. So it's, you know, sitting like that. Something like that. See if we can get a side view. I mean, it's going to be colossal compared to my van. And, you know, it, of course, it's going to have to be on some kind of a carriage or a a cart or something so that's going to add another foot to it building all of that it, it just it's not practical to do it where i live right now if my wife and i move here we're here caretaking for my elderly mother but we don't plan to live here forever if we move then it might be a possibility but just I really don't, even in the garage, I don't have, because this thing's every bit of 11.6 wide. And as you can see, I mean, if I had this thing right up against the garage door and I had the lower compartment here, it might work. I'm, I'm trying to be as objective as I can about the uh, doing it, but as you can see, just how big it would be. And of course it would have to be modular because I, there's no way to haul around a, a 12 foot six object. You know, I'd have to have it on a low boy and you were talking, you know, a lot of, a lot of work, but that even, you know, worst case or best case, that's going to be years down the road. Let me take this thing down before it falls. Oh my God, it's heavy. Ugh. All right, part two is the flight engineer station. What's probably going to happen with the flight engineer station is I'm going to make all of the I'm going to make all the structure. I'm going to make that panel. I'm going to reproduce it. I'm going to make the panel over there and all the basket that it sits in all the way around and the table. I might make the throttle quadrants. The problem is, is number one, there is no way that I'm going to be able to afford those gauges because those gauges at best on eBay right now, and eBay is cheap. You know, if you go to an aviation parts warehouse, those things are going to be terribly expensive, but just, just count them, you know, so there's six times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, that's 72 times 30. You know, you're talking almost $3,000 just for that area right there. Just for those little two inch gauges. And you got all the electrical, then you know, the voltometers, then you've got all the big fuel gauges, if I can find them. Then you got this entire panel over here. And then you've got another panel here, and then a sub panel here. And then you've got the entire table. And on all those tables and sub panels, you've got circuit breakers you've got probably in the area of 200 toggle switches 
and probably close to 100 or more push to test lamps. Even if I duplicate that stuff from resin, it's going to take a, a very, very long amount of time to do it. I don't mind making the structure to provide, you know, future finishing of it. But in, in terms of on this build timeline, doing that, like I said in my earlier videos, this area of the B36 is pretty much identical on the J model. And there's four surviving J or three surviving J models. And the pictures, they're very well documented. There's, there's no mysteries. It's all right there. Anybody can look at it. Like I said, I want to do things that you, you can't really see, like, like the first edition of the H models. You can go see the RV36 at the Castle Air Museum, but mine is slightly different from it because it's a little bit earlier. But that's the only option I had whenever I, uh, I switched to the H model because I didn't want to do a J because, once again, there's three intact J models. So, unless I want to produce two years worth of populating these gauges, I, I, I don't think that my channel is going to have that, that kind of an audience. I don't think I want to be able to keep the attention. Um, like I said, my next build is going to be the XB36, and I really want to get that started sooner than later. I don't, I don't want to have to wait five years. I'm thinking two years away or less. But that's the deal with the flight engineer. I hope I've, I've cleared that up. There's just so much money and time in that area of the airplane to dedicate to reproducing something that's already perfectly documented, widely accessible, documented stuff. Um, so, there's that, and there's the, uh, the entire idea of doing the entire nose. If I find a different piece of property, it's it's definitely doable because it's very simple. There's no there's no uh, consoles to be built. There's no you know it's just the K bombing system and the navigator's table and everything and the the Loran. It's very doable. It's just where to put it. Um, I will say that you know once again, this is all based on the performance of my channel. It's based on the subscribers I get. The, the amount of time people are actually watching my videos. Uh, if I start making money off of YouTube, I'll be able to ded dedicate that to the B36. Or, But the way things are right now, I think it's the most logical to stick with what we've got right here in terms of, you know, <laughs> finances, logistics, storage. Uh, if I want to take this thing to air shows in the future or military shows or whatever, I don't want to have to haul two vehicles with two trailers. But then again, if that, for lack of a better word, sells, I'll do it. But I think that's where we're going to keep it. I, I hope I've given you all a better idea of where I'm going. And once again, to all you new people, thanks for coming aboard. I'm not building an airworthy airplane. Uh, I could take my model again and and put it up against the, the neighborhood to show you how big a the 230-foot wingspan would be. But actually, let's do that really quick. Oh, let's see if there was a B36 sitting right where that one is. Just how much space it would take. Let's see. Something like, something like that. Yeah. That doesn't, I'm not going to be able to duplicate that. It would go well beyond my neighbor's house and up to the next one. And then something like that. No, that's not, that's not right. I mean, the B36, you're talking about, you know, that house. Well, well past that house there. <laughs> and I mean the tail is going to be up in those trees anyways oh, food for thought in case you've never had the opportunity to stand beside of a B36 it's, it's a truly colossal machine 
I hope to make it up to the Air Force Museum relatively soon and do some uh, detailed reviews of what's going on, especially in the Bombay around that airplane. But anyways, thanks for the awesome compliments, guys. Thanks for your support, your donations, your subscriptions. I really appreciate it. It makes my day. I'll see you next time.